Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, thank good you. Afternoon. For, yeah. Thank you for joining us uh, here for the interview. Um, so, uh, as you know, this is going to be uh, for the PTMT camp participants. But uh, as uh, Ajit sir also mentioned in the last uh, inauguration of OFC, OFCM that PTMG started in 1990, OFCM MTTS started in 1993. Yeah, right. And uh, after seven, eight years, around 2000, the PTMT camp started. Correct. Motivated you or the learnings from the MTTS camps that you thought about having a, a focused course on pedagogical aspect of mathematics and aimed at the uh, UG teachers in India. Yeah, I think the credit should actually be given to the. I think the credit should actually be given to the participants of MTTS camps because they were very attracted and impressed by the teaching methods of MTTS camps. So they kept on almost on a very valedictory or in the feedback form. In other comments, they used to write or they used to uh, say that we should run such a camp to college teachers so that they can teach so that you know this kind of teaching methodology will be available to larger audience uh, my a kind of uh, response to those things at that time was that uh, you you are the future generation teachers so okay within the next 5 years or so you will become teachers you should do it that will be much more effective because i also quoted the usual english say you can't teach new tricks to old dogs yeah <laughs> yeah uh the reason is i see i joined bombay university around 1992 practically 1991 to say and i was involved with a lot of uh, so-called refresher teacher refresher courses for teachers right ugc conducted thing and i found many Teachers just came for the attendance and certificate because it meant about two increments or whatever it is those days. Very rarely they were yeah, interested in learning anything. This is in spite of the fact you know me. I am very intense. I know their background. So I went to the very, very elementary level and tried to do something which will be useful to them rather than many times, you know, uh, the organizer invites his friends he comes and talks about how great he is or what kind of great work he has done in PH, etc. And, okay, it may not matter anything at all to college teachers. Okay, it may not be any use. They may not even be able to understand. Whereas I focused on something which is related to what they are doing, at the same time taking it at a higher level. Okay, start, of course, starting from the basic. But I found uh, very rarely they kind of uh, responded well. Okay, they did not... So based on that, uh, whenever the, our participants suggested I should have such a thing, I was not reluctant. I was reluctant. I was not very keen, enthusiastic about that. But things started changing towards the end of the last century, around 1999, and etc. Because I, I saw in the first course, the younger students started coming. I mean, younger faculty members who just finished BSc, MSc, mm -hmm. and joined as a faculty somewhere. And and I could see they understood they are not really, you know, absorbed or mastered the concepts, but they have to teach. And so they were very keen. And so in every referral course during tea time, I was surrounded by young people asking me, so, they, okay, this was very nice. So, this question students ask me, how do you explain what kind of example you should give like that? Real pedagogical things. That was the time what happened was one of the former MTTS uh, participant, very early one, perhaps the first one possibly. He was in Madurai College. He uh, called me to uh, organize an analysis workshop for teachers. Uh, I think Srinivasan, myself, and perhaps one another uh, professor, Soma Sundaram from Tamil Nadu, V3, maybe I don't know who, whether there was any fourth one. We went there, and uh, barring two or three was pretty old, about 50 plus, the rest of the things are very, very keen. Very, very keen. Okay. And that's when I seriously thought maybe I should start having such a program for college teachers. But as I said, the original credit should go to the participant and second credit should go to the 
flow of new young blood okay and that made the change because all the old people who are attend by statutory rules about two or three or whatever number of requisite number of refresher course they attended so they didn't bother to attend anymore so younger students okay rather young faculty people okay they started attending a refresher course that made the change for me yeah uh, what pedagogical principles are at the core of ptmt camps or what uh, are the things that you try to imbibe on this right. the new teachers yeah see there is a very marked difference from the way uh, i a kind of uh, organize or visualize mtts camp and the ptmt camp hmm. in mtts camp i want you to be fresh that is even if you had learned something basics about some subject i ask you to kind of format it not even to forget it okay format or write in fact in the correct uh, linux language you wipe out the hard disk not format okay the format you can still recover okay wiping out is completely gone it's a fresh then so there i have to go somewhat very linearly whereas whereas in ptmt let us take one, one standard example like uh, real analysis you are so we are teaching essentially bsc level real analysis let us say in pedagogy so the teacher he has done already in bsc third year and he has done his msc and he is likely to start that course in his college also so that means he has lot of I mean, ideas about the subject okay and definitions and some certain examples certain theorems we has okay so i don't have to go linearly there even though the entire course at the end of the course we have covered it as you would see in a linear fashion but it's not necessarily linearly and since you had been a participant you might have seen that okay so what we do is so there will be something somebody who will be about 3 4 lectures or 5 lectures on real number system another one will be simultaneously on the same day he will be starting on sequences a third person may be talking about continuity okay all the three courses may be on the same day okay first lecture first lecture then we go because you had already seen that okay then this way we also criss cross okay so that is the first principle i said okay don't think of linearly that is i started real number system second lecture also should continue third lecture should do after that we will come to sequences or whatever it is that's not the way okay this is a parallel that's the first thing and second thing is since they already know it's a sub, see unlike dishing out information mtts is never for information right i mean the kind of I mean, bombarding you with a lot of information it is rather the method of thinking and which is peculiar to the subject because each subject has its own way of looking at things mathematics so we try to kind of choose the correct examples and exercises which they should kind of understand well and which also throws a light about the subject which gives a flavor of the subject well so we emphasize that point of thing so when you do this in the classroom these are the examples you should emphasize these are the subtle points you should do when you come through the proof what are the subtle points you should mention okay it may look very easy line by line proof but there are a lot of subtleties these are the things which we try to emphasize okay we do that in mtts but we may not do it from you know, from teachers point of view from, that is from a learners point of view this is from teachers point of view he is at sitting the audience is a teacher he knows the subject okay but he, the, it's a delivery okay we'll delivering so that you should have an impact on his audience so that's what we emphasize so we essentially we equip him with the pedagogical aspects okay we believe that he already has, a, has enough competence there is no problem the only thing is what are the essential aspects certain certain points which you he might have missed during his learning process okay that kind of thing and some kind of interrelationships within various subjects or within the subject itself from various some chapter to some other theme there is a common recurring theme sometimes people forget yeah. yeah these are the things yeah and so if so i am asking a question outside the class like uh, now that we are all new teachers and we all have our own ideas of uh, pedagogy also like how we learned also and what we think is a better way and what mtts also teaches us uh, in the ptmt camps so uh, if 
one has to struggle with this ideas that even if one thinks about something may not be able to implement it like for some things to imbibe in yourself as a teacher like the mtts methodology you always say it takes 3 days for a students to yeah. learn the mtts style but it takes 3 camps for a teacher to imbibe the mtts way of teaching so what would you suggest us right yeah my suggestion for young teachers for the last time on three decades is the same the first thing is that uh, when you are going to teach most in the audience believe that you are an expert so you don't have to show that you are an expert to them okay they axiomatically assume that you are an expert so don't try to show off the idea is that you know you want to teach them okay and you have the other thing which i say you take them along with you very crude way of saying or funny way of saying will be it okay make them partners in the crime okay <laughs> so take them along with you and the third thing which i say is there are many people just uh, i have seen it even very very well established teachers and more so in beginners that they think the audience is somewhat dull or they are not among um, stupid or they are not uh, quick etc never ever assume that in fact you should assume okay they are much smarter than you that is as a teacher okay my audience is much smarter than me why that makes you alert okay and also the body language is good because when you think when i think that you are as intelligent or more intelligent than i am then okay there is a much better interaction between us the body language which i show is different okay whereas when i sh- think that you are very inferior to me you are there i am going to give you are going to learn okay that kind of thing then it's different okay. so the interaction never takes place so the best thing is you know you should have sincere desire to teach okay but think that they are equal or better okay so that you you will be on your toes and that body language will also help you to establish a rapport with your audience okay that's the basic thing which i would like to say because many people have that kind of uh, uh what you call condescending attitude that as though they are much better off than the audience so they are there it's like you know uh, to quote um, our indian thing as though ganga ganges is going to flow okay <laughs> from there to you kind of thing okay it's not <laughs> okay so like a, you know like a power electricity power it has to if the power has to work there is a movement both ways yes all right so it has to be there indirectly there is a imperceptible learning process for any teacher also from the audience because if they don't understand then uh, that's a message you are getting your feedback okay something is flowing into you yeah. that means you ought to do something so that is the attitude one should have yeah you will like one of the thing that the way uh, mtts take the feedback seriously it really tells us that they are listening to the students and whatever they are saying they are listening very intently and trying to uh, improve or try to accommodate their concerns yeah. i think this was also one of the thing that i really Uh, learned from my uh, participation in entry risk camps that the feedback it's a two way thing teaching is not as you were saying I, yeah i really no that's see that i'm very glad that uh, you noticed and you appreciate that because many of my close few, uh, you know mtts team members will know that we usually ask for thursday night or friday we get the feedback form saturday is the last working day usually in, mm-hmm. let's say main camp Mm-hmm. and you will not believe friday night after dinner i will go through all the feedback forms it will be something like around 200 feedback forms okay first time i will go through everything second time okay already i would have formed certain things right there is a clusters right some kind of uh, points are mentioned repeatedly mm-hmm. or in a, maybe in a different language but you see the pattern okay the second time go through that and try to understand in depth and note what are the point third time just to go through. 
So by the time I go to bed, usually it will be 2 p.m. So next day at the validator when I meet, I know the feedback forms very well. Mm -hmm. Okay. That has been the case. Yeah. And all through. Okay, whenever I participate in the last thing, we, we except uh, last year I did, missed because I was in New Year's. Otherwise, we used to do that. Mm -hmm. So we we take it very very seriously, and in fact, many other things we modified, implemented, or changed. Okay, that is why it's, it's, it's a MTTS is we don't think we are perfect because because possibly everybody is fed my axiom. No, nothing in the world is perfect. Yeah. Okay, so there is always okay, something we can do better. Yeah, feedbacks are very important. So it uh, again feedback, as I said, even though I, I I am getting more information, but certainly perceptive students also get some subtle points from me. It's like a slow poison. I am putting some points in their mind. Okay, yeah. the specific nature of certain points of my course. Even in FTTS feedback form, if you ask, you will see. <laughs> okay, certain questions are trying to so see. This is something very specific to this kind of camp. Has it been useful to you? Helped you? Or have you appreciated that? Why do we ask? Is it also tells us whether it's useful? And second time, he also learns. Oh, this is something different. Yes. See, I'm always of the opinion because even in elders in the family. It is nice to say how you struggle to make things work in your family, mm -hmm. to youngsters. Many people think they should have a, like, you know, protected, okay, like, you know, keep them in ivory tower or what they call very inconstant, very safety net, like, you know, Siddharth was held during his initial days, mm -hmm. okay, because when he was told that he may turn into a saint or whatever it is, yeah. like that, they, they tried to give a cocoon thing right like kagum and that's not a good thing so one should always tell them what is happening okay it's not to say that either you are sacrificing something you are doing something great but you are actually preparing the younger people for the reality okay yeah. that i think should be part of the game yeah okay so uh, now that mtts and ptmt has been going on for many years uh, we see that we, uh, like I usually also say that you take any student in mathematics who is pursuing higher mathematics, say PhD, and bit, like within three connections of his, you will find that something is connected to MTT. MTT is, yeah, right. Maybe even the first hand connections is a high probability that he is associated to MTTS in some way, had attended a camp or was taught by some MTTS faculty. It's always there. So I learned a lot of things with the MTTS peer. <laughs> yes. The peer who was an MTTS yes, alumnus. Yes. That is true. That is true. And I am one of them because I couldn't attend the MTTS camps in my yeah. education. But mm. I benefited a lot from someone who has been attending. Right. MTTS. For example, Priyamuda also came to that way only. To, yes. yeah. yeah. Right. A lot yeah. of people. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yeah. So I like, you know, the so-called Adash number in mathematics world, I think in yes. India, there should be a MTDS, MTDS number. MTDS number, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it will be less than or equal to two. <laughs> right. So, uh, so the, our last question maybe would be, uh, how do you envision the future of PTMT and what role do you see the PTMT can or should play in the mathematics community? See, when you want to teach a course, forget about PTMT even as a college level, university level or whatever. What I do is people immediately see what is the textbook, what is the syllabus. I never worry about that. That's my least or last of my concerns. Mm -hmm. My thing is this subject, okay, each subject has a very specific way of thinking and very kind of landmark results, okay, culminations, okay, points. So what are the things I want my students at the end of the course, when they leave, they should have some kind of an idea, what I call the ethos, the spirit of the subject. Right? So that is what something like a bird's eye view, eagle's eye view, you just to sit on the, okay, uh, uh, huge, I mean, at top of a hill, then you see the land, level. it's a global view. You have that first. After that, you go into the detail. So my thing will be, now I know, 
these are the main results I want to emphasize in my course. Then I'll always, as I do in my classroom, I always go backwards. If I have to prove the result, what do I need? If I have to make sure by the time when I come to the result, the student should feel that although he knows this is the result, I know, yeah, even I could have done it. Yeah. That kind of feeling I want to give. That means I have to build up his intuition by proper examples, proper questions, and proper results. Okay. Mm -hmm. Results stated in the form. If the result may be there, but may not be in the form you want it, so that it makes him guess the final result. Mm -hmm. So I spend a lot of time in this kind of stuff. This is what one misses. Usually what they do is open, okay, today I will finish this one and a half sections. Today it should be possible. Okay, do it. And then next. That's why many teachers do. They have, that is what they mean by lesson plan. Mm -hmm. For me, it's a course plan. Okay. The entirety. Okay. And now, project it into the PTMT. It still makes sense. Now you have an audience which is matured. Okay. It has been taught the course very well and it may be possibly teaching the course at students. Okay. So it, the implementing this will be much easier for them. Because they had already seen various aspects of that. Okay. The only connecting picture they may not have, but that's all we have to give. So it should be easier for them. So that is what I mean, some, one, one has to project in, in a PTMT course. I hope future uh, PTMT, okay, without Kumarisan will also happen and they will live up to these expectations. Yes, sir. Definitely, at least we will try uh, this other one aspect that you thought you missed because you couldn't uh, officially make it into a long camp. PTMT. Yeah the teacher presentations participant presentations i think we will uh, come up with the series of uh, presentations from the former ptmt participants and that will uh, try to fill up that gap maybe which you yeah prefer. that will be wonderful that will be wonderful so anything uh, in the remaining if you want to say to the participants uh, of ptmt uh, I don't have to say, except I appreciate their thing because many uh, participants from PTMT, they said that they went back and taught okay, with confidence and they could see a lot of uh, improvement in their students and their performance in various exams, etc. also. Okay. And some other things was much better. Some other subjects which people really hate or, you know, are afraid of like measure theory. Mm -hmm. Okay. After that, they said, to me, I want to go and force my college or HOD to give me that course. Okay, <laughs> that is a kind of confidence. So I think it, it just shows two things that uh, PTMT is needed and it has done its job very well. Okay, I hope. So I should thank the, the participants of PTMT for this feedback. <laughs> thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Yeah. Ah, bye. Thank you. I'll